Well, hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bokor, your host. Uh, thanks very much for tuning in. Um, this is a follow-up episode for the 2022 Hyundai Ioniq 5. Now, I did a review on episode 154, so I would encourage you to go back and watch that and then watch this show to kind of fill in some of the gaps that I had. Now, before I get started, I'm very excited to announce I have a new sponsor for the EV Revolution show for the next several months. That is um, supported in part by a company called Budget Safe Solar. If you are considering solar in most any part of North America, give my friends a call. That's Mike. They'll take the time to listen to your specific situation and help you reach a decision about what's available to you and what makes the most sense. If you'd like to join the growing solar industry, they'd like to speak with you. You can go to www.budgetsafesolar.com to contact them. They will listen to you and provide you with some information. Go to the website, register, put, fill out a form, and they'll get back to you. Now, let me get on to this episode here where, I'm again, I'm not providing a full comprehensive review. What I am providing is kind of an update as I've been driving this vehicle for about five days now. So I can give you a bit of a sense of what it's like, how it's been for driving. Because the last time I had it, we only had it for really a few hours and we I had to share it with Andrew down in San Diego. Wonderful car though, wonderful experience. So this gave me a little bit more, you know, what's it like to drive as a daily driver and go grocery shopping and do errands and all the kind of stuff that we do with normal cars. So uh, this is my synopsis on that. Now, as I mentioned in my last review, I really love the styling of this vehicle. And this time Hyundai gave me this nice matte gray color finish. I think it looks super awesome. I just did, went through the car wash, so it's a little bit cleaner than it was because we've had a lot of uh, rain and stuff in the last few days. Uh, but it's a lovely car. Now, one thing I will say before I get to some of my uh, the driving part of this video is I think pro this is the most this vehicle is the most that I've ever had people come up to me and ask me what it's about or give me a thumbs up or say, hey, this is a great looking vehicle. What is it? Can you tell me more about it? I must have had this in the last five days, a dozen people approach me, either ask me to roll down their window when I'm at a, a stoplight or I was in a parking lot. I went to Lowe's and, and I came out and this guy was walking around the car looking at it, asked me a bunch of questions. I've had all these kind of things and I have people give me thumbs up driving along uh, and people just kind of look at it and, and go like this. This is a head turner, it really is. You know, I didn't have that with the EV6 from Kia, even though that's a much sportier and sleeker styling. And it goes to show that this is a unique styling that Hyundai has come out with in this Ionic 5. It really is a wonderful package. I think, well, it is more roomier than the EV6 because it does have a higher roof line. So a little easier to get in and out, a little bit more comfort space in my opinion. It's got a longer wheelbase but a shorter body. And I think that helps with the interior space because you have that little bit more, you know, overall roominess to, to have people in and get around and move. This is spacious inside. I've had no problems putting people in here and stuff, all kinds of things in here. It's been absolutely phenomenal. So again, you know, it is a head turner. It's a great looking vehicle. And, um, you know, out of, out of so far the EV6 and the Hyundai, I, I do prefer the looks of the Ionic 5 better. Now again, looks are subjective. So they're both beautiful cars and they're both based on that same EGMP platform. So, and as you'll see coming up on my driving portion, that's kind of where I focus on um, in, in providing a good feedback of how the experience has been and then nitpicking some of the small things in this vehicle. So let's get right onto that part. First of all, um, again, as I, as I said on that uh, December video, this is just really a smooth, comfortable driving vehicle. Um, it's much smoother than my Model 3, even with my modified suspension. It's much quieter than my Model 3 without any additional soundproofing that I've done. So it, again, the, the South Koreans are building very tight, very well-built, very solid vehicles. You know, no squeaks, rattles, things like that. This has 5,400 kilometers on it, uh, and it's a press vehicle, which means that journalists tend to bash these cars around quite a lot. And the Ionic 5 is, is similar. This is the same drivetrain as I just, of course, talked about um, in my last episode with the EV6. So the, the, the platform, the driving experience is gonna be very similar to that. Now, where this differs a little bit is in the ride. You know, I, I wouldn't throw this around a, a slalom course as fast as I would, let's say, the EV6. They're going to be a little bit different. 
But this vehicle doesn't need to be a racehorse. It doesn't need to be a thoroughbred from that perspective, right? It does everything that I've asked it to do and that I've read other and I've talked to other owners uh, about it and, and you know, read uh, forums and things like that. Owners are absolutely loving this vehicle, just absolutely loving it. So the South Koreans are building high quality, really good vehicles. And this GEMP platform, I just can't say enough good things about. It's a solid platform. Um, is it as polished as Tesla's autopilot? No, it does wiggle a little bit. Um, it does pretty good at going through intersections when it loses the lines and maintaining it, but sometimes it'll it'll jerk a little bit to try to find the line. So you do have to pay attention. Uh, again, these are tools predominantly designed for highway driving to help with the monotony of those driving on longer trips or when you're, when you're in, in driveway for a bit. It does stop and go. It will stop. And then when you go, you tap on the pedal or you press one of the buttons on the, um, the steering wheel to get going. Has those features, has the distance indicator for the number of cars, all that stuff works good. Now, as I said on the EV6, that when this disengages, when the lane keeping disengages, there is no audible alarm. Um, that all that was was telling me that I oh no, that was one of my cameras. Um, there is no audible alarm. It's just it just stops. So like Teslas and others that go that beep when they go on, Nissan's the same. Beep when they go off. Make it they make a sound. This does it. So you need to be cognizant of that fact if you're going to be using these functions, because if it loses the lane, you won't know about it because it'll just stop. It'll you know it'll cut out. The system will cut out. So I really wish that in a software update that Hyundai, Kia, and Genesis, because I know Genesis is going to be the same system, will put audible feedback when the system not only engages, but uh, in fact, when it does engage and disengage that. So that's one feedback that I have on the car. Um, that is, a, I would say, a negative. I, something that they, they should be able to easily fix in a software update. Now, very comfortable driving position. No, no arguments there. In and out, exit, entry, all that stuff is great. The controls are easy to find. Temp controls uh, are nice, you know, a, a soft touch. You can go right to some of the media and stuff. Now, I really kind of wish that this would keep the settings that you have as far as media and stuff or the screen that you're watching when you get out of the car because when you get back in, you get this guest or maybe I have to log in as somebody. Maybe I have to set up a profile and I didn't do that. So that could be it. But some of these small things I wish it would kind of continue to, to remember. I got to go back, you know, press a button to get their last screen I had. Now, um, as far as memory goes, it has memory seats, uh, all the, you know, lighting, all that stuff works really nice. Uh, so comfort level is very, very high quality. I've had people in the back seat and they've said, hey, this is just absolutely fantastic in here. Um, again, it's so quiet. I mean, uh, you know, um, so what else can I tell you about driving impressions? Uh, as far as the range go, I'm going to put up a sheet at the end of the video to calculate my range because I'm not done. But this seems to be this seems to be bang on again. The Koreans are not really overestimating the range, and they're not really underestimating the range. You know, I'm averaging about 18 and a half kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers right now, uh, and that's on my um, uh, what is my total route? I have over almost 270 kilometers. Uh, so far, and I'm going to do more. So that, in my opinion, is pretty good. Uh, you know, we've had some temperatures cool a little bit again today. Yesterday was a little warmer. So it's, you know, it's a bit up and down. All right, so I got rid of that. Now, the other thing is I've been driving this in level three regen mode. Uh, I started with iPedal, but I actually prefer level three regen with the last part uh, manual braking. I really like that. Um, the iPedal is just as, exactly the same as the, key, the EV6, which I thought was great. I drove with that all, all the time. I wanted to try something different because this thing has the same problem that the, IV, uh, the EV6 had is that it doesn't save the setting when you have iPedal on. You have to turn it on again. So I decided to leave it at level three and just use manual braking for the last. And that seems to be a really nice, comfortable ride setting. You, again, you can feather the amount of regen based on the accelerator dec release, you know, decrease and increase. Um, so it has that, that effect like they all do. Plus, uh, of course, the ability to, uh, to use your manual, um, use your foot for the last 10 feet or so and have a nice smooth stop. Um, uh, this is an excellent car that has um, just um, exceeded, I, I won't say exceeded my expectations because my expectations with this are pretty high 
based on my initial drive and then based on the EV6 and based on what I'm reading and seeing about the Genesis GV60, which again is the same vehicle, same platform, just a different skin, a little bit different element that they're going to the market with. And I'm looking forward to seeing that this summer. But no issues in navigating around, even with these uh, with these winter tires that I still have on right now. So the handability, the drivability of the, of the vehicle is fantastic. And again, I just can't say enough about um, the noise the lack of noise it's so super quiet and, and i am actually right now driving 70 kilometers an hour basically into the wind um, and you're hardly hearing anything if you hear anything at all it's that good so um, you know they've really built this high quality car hopefully uh, those sediments come across here on camera and um, yeah now me now let's get back to wrapping up this episode Well, I hope you enjoyed that long section about my driving thoughts and some of the little nitpicky things that I found on this. But barring all that aside, anything negative, this is, you know, in summary, this is a fantastic car. Again, watch episode 154 if you want all the details, all the, the, the interior stuff and some of the, the controls that I walked through, things like that. Go watch that episode. This is more of a follow-up just to give you my impressions of the vehicle after spending a few days with it. And it is just phenomenal vehicle. The range has been spot on. I'll put up this rain chart here so you see what it looks like that I've had for the week. It's been bang on. In fact, the range estimate, if anything, has been low to what the actual mileage that I've been getting on this vehicle. Um, the weather has been up and down. We've been anywhere from the, the two degrees to the 12 degrees to the minus two degrees. It's been an up and down week today. It's about three degrees right now and starting to warm up uh, four degrees maybe. So it's been up and down. I've had this parked in the garage. I've only full charged it once. That was on Monday night. Uh, today is Friday. So I've been driving basically with it back and forth to work and around just on the one charge to see how much I can get out of it before um, and, and to give you guys this range calculation. So it's been spot on. It's been really, really good. A very solid, comfortable drive and so quiet. I just can't get over how quiet this vehicle. Very, very minimal motor whine. And, you know, again, I use my Tesla Model 3 as kind of my default standard to compare vehicles against because I drive that every day. That's my car and I'm so used to it. So I can hear the motor whine quite easily in the Model 3 and it's always been there. This is very, very hard to hear. It's a very, very uh, light, high pitch whine at certain speeds. It's a very quiet vehicle. Hyundai, Kia, they've done excellent jobs in soundproofing and making these vehicles comfortable. And again, to give drivers and owners the experience of, look, just plug it in overnight, get in the morning and go and do your thing. If you need to plug it in that night, the next night, do it. Set your, you know, set your range throttles or your charging throttles to 80, 85, 90%, whatever, you know, Hyundai recommends that you, that you can do and, and live with that. It's got more than enough daily range, more than enough very capable charging curve to be able to charge this vehicle and get you you know in on longer road trips again with that 800 volt architecture a fantastic car and again this vehicle here the top of the line is just under sixty two thousand dollars canadian that's before the five thousand dollar federal rebate here and of course these do qualify in the u.s for the the u.s fed tax credit as well and that that system could change it could even get better but the only problem with these vehicles really is availability because they're selling like hotcakes, both the EV6, um, the Ionic 5, I mean, ID4, on and on, right? All these vehicles are just starting to sell and the OEMs are having a problem, you know, ramping up production. But trust me, folks, give them a year, they will start ramping up. Hyundai's already talking about, or Hyundai Motor Group is already talking about opening up a plant in the US and in other parts of the country to start producing their electric vehicles as they continue to enhance and evolve their platforms and add more choice to their vehicle lineup. So this is, it's going to get better after, you know, we got the logistics challenges and other things going on in the world that's obviously compounding and impacting things across the board, not just electric vehicles, but everything. So give them a time. My suggestion to you is if you're interested in one of these vehicles, get in the queue now because you'll probably have to wait till 2023 to get deliveries, you know, unless you get lucky and find something. But I've only seen a couple of these on the road. In fact, the first day I got this, I went downtown Toronto and I parked in, in a public parking lot and right next to me was an Ionic 5. It's the, only the second one that I've seen on the road so far in the last month. So these are that brand new, but have patience. Um, you know, if you can see a dealer, if they've got something to, to sit in and at least look at, maybe they don't have anything to drive, at least go do that. But 
take my, my advice here, folks, this is a fantastic vehicle. All the South Korean products are just awesome the way that they've come through electrification. So again, you know, a double thumbs up recommendation on this. I just can't stress how more how wonderful of a car this is. Uh, you know, look at this. The good thing, folks, is that there's more choice coming and keep your eye on the South Koreans. I hope to get the third part of the uh, HMG family, the Genesis GV60 later on this year, just to test and again, based on the same platform that you see here, the EGMP. So. Uh, go check out Hyundai Ioniq 5 if you're interested in these vehicles. And again, don't wait. Um, don't wait for, you know, until they start getting inventory because they're going to be playing catch up for a long time. And that's it for this episode of the EV Revolution show. So thanks very much for tuning in. I appreciate it if you're watching on YouTube. Uh, you know, again, appreciate you watching. Subscribe if you haven't. The birds are telling me that they like the show, I guess. Uh, and uh, of course, if you're a Patreon supporter, thank you very much. Always very humbled by my Patreon support and continue to stay safe and watch the EV landscape because man, there's so much stuff happening now. You know, we've got governments adding incentives and, and, and beefing up EV programs. It's an exciting time to be looking at an all electric vehicle. So until the next show, again, everybody stay safe and I will see you when I see you. Take care and bye-bye.